It's easy to learn, difficult to master. It's been my experience that one of the most difficult aspects to master for many people is to understand and explain what an agile mindset is. Let's discuss. There's an old woodsman's aphorism that says if you give them four hours to chop down a tree, spend the first two hours sharpening your axe. Now that makes perfect sense. We should always hone our tools to make them as effective as possible. But it's not just the tool itself that makes a difference. If you take two identical tools and give one to a skilled practitioner and another to someone who's not so skilled, you'll see a difference in productivity and quality. Now let's consider agile methodologies as a tool for improving the effectiveness of software development. So in that case, what makes a skilled practitioner? Now you can take the scrum guide Read it back to front and memorise it word for word. Does that make you a skilled practitioner? You could take any number of books about Scrum or other Agile me methodologies. Read them back to front and memorise them word for word. Does that make you a skilled practitioner? Now you can memorise the Scrum Guide and any number of books on Agile methodologies. And that will give you a good knowledge base. But let me tell you a story. I was watching a TV show one day and there was a character on there uh, who had an eidetic memory. Therefore, she never forgets anything. She was working as a waitress in a truck stop. One of the customers asked, if you remember everything you've ever read, why are you working as a waitress? And the character replied, yes, I remember everything. Doesn't mean I understand it. And that's very illustrative. I'm going to paraphrase one of the principles of the Agile Manifesto, that the best software is developed by self-organizing teams. Now, self-organizing is another expression that seems to confuse people or they find it hard to define. For me, basically, it boils down to the freedom and capability to make decisions. And those decisions should be shaped by reflecting on decisions that you've made previously. Now that decision-making process is going to show its true value in a culture that espouses the Agile Manifesto and the underlying 12 principles, and also the values of Agile methodologies that create a culture that's collaborative and trusting. I'd like to touch on one more aspect of the Agile mindset um, before we finish this discussion, and that's curiosity. Now, armed with a good knowledge of Agile processes, and the, the ability to make good decisions about how, to, how and when to apply that knowledge, and the curiosity, the inquisitiveness to look at what we do and say, is there some way I can possibly do this better? In this way, we begin to sharpen our tool. And once we can do that, we're well on our way to becoming skilled practitioners. In future discussions, we'll look more in depth at decision-making processes and the psychology behind that, how to manage flow and value using Agile methodologies, amongst other things. Hope to see you again soon. Okay, that's enough for now. I have to go. Uh, don't regard me as any kind of authority on this. That's just my way of thinking. Join the discussion. Sláinte